Well, it's late June, so that means all of the spring bloomers are done, and we're into the early summer flowers. And we'll start with this lovely one. This is one of our native anemones. This is called thimbleweed. And because it has the word weed in it, people probably don't like it. And it actually does seed itself. This patch right here came in on its own. But it's a lovely native plant, one of the anemones with these beautiful white uh, five-petal flowers and this interesting kind of divided foliage. But this pure white uh, uh, flower, it's called thimbleweed because the, you can get a hint of it here. The developing seed cluster that comes after the flower when it's mature is kind of thimble shaped and about that size. So hence the name thimbleweed. So again, we didn't plant this, just came in on its own, but we're happy it did. We're right in front of the Jensen Center here. Uh, and here's the remnants of uh, Solomon's plume or false Solomon seal, just flowered a little. Little, you know, maybe last week this was in full bloom. This will produce, the, you can just see the start of the nice, of the berries here. There'll be a nice bright kind of striped dark red berry later in the season. But the main show here is this beautiful uh, thimbleweed. Just across the walk from the uh, thimbleweed is our native campanula. This is uh, harebell. It's one of the bell flowers. Uh, almost looks like a grasp until it flowers with these pretty blue, uh, light blue, bluish purple, bell-shaped flowers. Um, we planted this in the wall here years ago, but uh, it, you often see it down right along the escarpment path at the clearing on that thin, dry soil it tolerates that. Uh, there's another bell flower up here called creeping bell flower, which is a non-native and can be quite invasive. But this is a nice native with these delicate uh, little blue flowers. Harebell, H-A-R-E, Harebell. We're here at the base of the lodge stairs and the, our native rose, which is called smooth rose, that because there aren't there are no thorns on the stem, mostly, until you get right at the bottom, you start to see some thorns. But that's why it's called smooth rose. But it's one of our, uh, it's a native shrub, likes sunnier areas, and it has these uh, five petaled, uh, in, in the world of roses, this is called a single flower. What we think of as a rose has all those multiple, multiple, multiple layers of petals. Those are called double flowers. This is called a single flower, single row of petals, pink, yellow center, very fragrant. And uh, these single flowered roses, for the most part, including this, this one, are fertile. So they'll produce a fruit. And the fruit that roses produce is called a rose hip, H-I-P, and it's red. Uh, they're small, uh, on smooth rows, but very pretty, and they last sometimes right into winter until something comes along and eats it. So this is our lovely native rose, smooth rose. Just up the stairs from the smooth rose is this gigantic, almost looks like a tropical plant. This is a native plant. This is cow parsnip. Uh, it's in that parsnip family with these large, almost dinner plate size uh, clusters of white flowers, these huge uh, divided leaves. Again, looks tropical there. So, I mean, this one is just gigantic. Uh, it's about six feet tall. Uh, people see it here and they wonder what it is. It, like, it looks like it almost doesn't belong. But it is a native plant, like sunny areas. A huge. And some people think this is uh, uh, the, the wild parsnip that you see growing in ditches now that has yellow, big clusters of yellow flowers. And that is a poisonous plant. That is uh, photophytotoxic. If you get the oil on your skin like you would with poison ivy, uh, but it has to be in the presence of sunlight on wild parsnip. But this is not that plant. People often think it is, and I've been asked over the years many times, uh, am I gonna get rid of this because it's that plant? It's not that plant. This is our native cow parsnip, not poisonous, not phytophototoxic. And really stunning right now when it's with these huge clusters of white flowers. Cow parsnip. Mm -hmm. 
Also near the base of the lodge stairs, uh, not far from the smooth rose and the cow parsnip, is uh, dwarf bush honeysuckle. So people hear the word honeysuckle and they say, well, that's got to be bad. This is a native plant. It's in a different genus than the true honeysuckle. This is bush honeysuckle, all one word. It's in full bloom right now. Uh, these pretty yellow flowers and clusters will produce a little uh, a seed capsule later in the season and often uh, a, a nice fall color of some purple in it. And this is about as tall as it gets, maybe three feet tall or so. Uh, it will sucker out and, and form almost like a tall ground cover. Some people use it as a ground cover. Not all ground covers are short, some of them are taller. Uh, so this is a nice uh, native plant. Often see it uh, toward the escarpment uh, more. But here it is at the base of the lodge stairs in this nice little grove. And again, in full bloom, dwarf bush honeysuckle. Not everything that's in bloom around here is something we want. Some of them are weeds, of course, and some of, of them are weeds that are also invasive species. And this is one of the invasive plants. This is called valerian. Some people know that because it's a common uh, element in some sleep aid medicines. So the valerian, uh, it's originally from Europe, came over to this country I think hundreds of years ago because it was a common medicinal plant back before we had synthetics. Here it is in bloom with these clusters of white flowers. Can, it can actually get up to like four feet tall. And these finely cut uh, leaves almost looks like a fern. Uh, it's perennial, and, and it, you, if you pull it, it'll break off usually and then re-sprout. And there are some areas where we have it that we tried to pull it, and it just comes back every year, of course. So this is one that you almost have to treat with an herbicide if you're going to get rid of it. And we don't want this taking over. Gill's Rock, further north of Ellison Bay, is just filled with it. And we don't, don't want that to happen here. Anyway, uh, one of our invasive species at the clearing, valerian. Well, here's something in full fruit already. This is buffalo berry, a nice native shrub, and along with leatherwood, which grows in the woods. It's uh, those are the first two woody plants, shrubs or trees that produce uh, a mature fruit, and this is them. They look like a honeysuckle berry, and I think a lot of people uh, mistake this for one of the invasive honeysuckles and cut it out. That's bad. Uh, this is really a great plant, and uh, these fruit won't last long. The birds will be after these soon, and they'll be probably gone in a week or so. But buffalo berry in full fruit. Uh, we're in the hay meadow, which is that open area just as you leave the property and come through the woods on the exit road. Uh, they used to make hay here and haven't done it for decades. But uh, this is another one of our Coreopsis meadows. This beautiful uh, yellow flower all through here. Same thing in the middle of campus and the uh, homestead meadow, the big meadow, is full of this too. Uh, Lanceleaf Coreopsis is one of the best. Uh, they're a little bit, they were peaked last week still nice but they were peak about a week ago and it's one of the best times of the year to be at the clearing when the coreopsis are in bloom uh, everybody loves them this bright yellow uh, and uh, a week from now they'll be done but uh, it's just spectacular uh, I always tell people uh, it's the clearing is beautiful every day of the year the month of March 31 days of March can be a challenge but every day of the year, but there are certain times when it's just really spectacular. Uh, when all the woodland flowers are in bloom uh, in May, uh, when the Coreopsis is in bloom in June, uh, fall color in mid-October usually is peak, and then the first snow in December. But right now is one of those great times when the Coreopsis is in bloom.